listening to Second Wind with Joyce Buford, where women who are ready to expand their life adventure discover the tools to stop playing small and tap into the courage required to enjoy their second wind. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Second Wind Podcast. Now, you know, I created this podcast to encourage you to play full out. First, by getting to know yourself better. To inspire you to dream big. Don't play this small game. Go for the big dream. The next was to inform you how to get your second wind experience, which is through my guests that I have, which are awesome women that are offering you great information to help you go in whatever direction you are called. And then, of course, you always have to create that community that keeps you connected and supported for your dream. Now, my guest today is very exciting because she is really working in a a new industry. Her name is Leighton Voigt. And, um, you know, what has happened within the last years is that the the industry of senior care many times called home care could be uh, older care but it's the care of our parents and how do we do that when the family has dispersed all over the United States or the world so that's a big issue for many families as the parents age Well, (laughs) Leighton has found her sweet spot in her life where she excels, but I want to tell you a little bit about her first. So Leighton was, grew up in Arkansas, where I grew up, Leighton, (laughs) and she grew up in a very small town, which Arkansas does have some little bitty towns, and in that town, she, she became very familiar with everybody takes care of everybody. You know, the the family, the neighbors, but it's a very close-knit community. And she felt very safe there and happy there. But then it was time to move on in her life. And she went to Colorado in 2015. And there was like moving from Mark Cages to a modern-day city. And um, she soon adjusted to her new home. Now... She went into political science and economics as her uh, schooling. And then after she left there, after she graduated, she worked for Whole Food Marketing. Now, there she became part of the leadership team, opened new stores, ran fun programs, and learned how to be the best in customer service. But then she had to quit because she really wasn't happy in the environment. And one thing her dad had always told her, be smart and make decisions that will make, put you in, in a happy spot, following your happiness compass, wise, wise information. So she quit and she quit um, Whole Food Marketing, which is a huge grocery chain. We have it here in Texas. And so anyway, She started her journey of self-search through meditation, journaling, and reflection. And she began working in the home care industry. There she began with being a scheduler at the home care office manager. Before she knew it, she was the owner. And her, her company is now Synergy home care and it's located in Longmont Colorado so anyway welcome Layton well thank you so much for having me yeah um it has been an how long has this industry been developing it it seemed like it just bloomed overnight it does seem that way and I feel like uh that's just because 
people just didn't know it existed unless if you knew unless if you really needed it um and it wasn't very commercialized but you know i i think it's it really started to bloom in the early aughts um and then you know definitely in the past 10 years it's become you know a well-known option for the yes. most part yeah. uh whenever i speak to you know, younger daughters and sons, um, a lot of times I hear, well, I just didn't even know this was an option. And, <laughs> you know, luckily it is. And uh, they definitely feel like the angels have just swooped in and <laughs> been able to make their lives work. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I even use it with my mother and we live in the same town, but we just couldn't live together. It was, she really needed the senior support. There's something to be said of a senior going in a community that supports them. Yes, I agree. And not only that, but you really have to draw for yourself a, a boundary where you remain daughter and not caregiver. Because once those lines get blurred, it, it, can, it can be very confusing in a soulful way. <laughs> If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, because, um, you know, there's in the transition of aging, there are different stages. And, um, you know, sometimes we go into dementia and that's hard on a family to have that in your home. Really it hard is, on them. It is really hard. Um, you know, my, my family went through it uh, with my grandmother whenever I was... Um, Whenever I was very young, my father was the youngest of her children. So, um, you know, at that point she had great grandchildren and, you know, um, but it's hard to see family members grieving someone who is still physically there. Yeah. And um, it can definitely be, you know, a disheartening obstacle to face. Yeah. So in Synergy Home Care, do you have a building that has different sections for the different needs? That's the type of one my mother was in. She went for oh. senior, and then as she needed more and more care, she moved to the other side of the building. <laughs> right. Place. right. That kind of and is. A lot of facilities or communities um, do have that. We specialize in something and something very special where we get to go into people's homes okay. and um, and provide care in the home. And, oh, you know, okay. from, from the moment that, you know, maybe they need help with errands and <clears throat> light yeah. housekeeping. Mm -hmm. And then we just follow them through their journey of aging um, until until it's, you know, full on care, um, right. full on personal care. And we love to be there from the beginning until the end, because it makes it such a more personal and personalized um, route of care for them. Yeah. Well, it's important keeping the same person that's involved <clears throat> with the family as long as you can, you know, just for their ease. Yeah. It is. So is it difficult? I know probably one of the things I hear is that, oh, no, I can't do this to my mother. I can't move her. I need to keep her here. So how do, do you, what is the, one of the biggest or some of the biggest questions that families ask you when they come for your help? A lot of what is asked mostly comes from places of fear because it's a very intimate service having someone come into your home and kind of ingrain that person into your everyday routine. I mean, I think about that um, at my age, personally, I don't like, and I tell my clients this, I don't like having company. <laughs> so, right. so I can only imagine what that feels like to have someone come into your home and, and help you with things that you're used to doing on your own, which right. is why we take such a delicate approach and a to, you know, matching them with the right person. And we ask, 
we ask, you know, questions to both our caregivers and our clients to help to help find the right balance um, in matching. Right. Um, so most of the questions are are fear based, like, um, you know, what happens if this person gets sick or, um, you know, what is your turnover rate? We're very lucky. We have, you know, some of the same people that started in 2014, which is a testament to just the way business was run um, by the previous owner and then carried on by myself. Um, yeah, because you've been involved with this since what 15? 2000 2017 oh, oh 17 yes yeah yeah so part of that customer service that you learned <laughs> on right. your path has mm-hmm. certainly helped you and <laughs> it really has i mean i <laughs> you know if anyone has been to a whole foods you know <laughs> that it's just you know, kind of over the top, uh, Chick-fil-A type, <laughs> you know, like we're here to please. Um, yes. And you you definitely have to carry that with you. And something, but something that I learned um, about customer service in this industry is when you answer the phone and it's an intake call, you really have to identify quickly who you're speaking to. Uh-huh. And, um, Lori, who was the previous owner, she explained it to me this way. You have to identify if they're a thinker or a feeler. And generally, not always, men are very, um, what are the prices? What do you do? When can you come help? You know, this, this, this. And then, you know, uh, the a lot of the women and absolutely some of the men are very uh, focused on the feeling side of it is this the right thing can can you counsel me a little bit on this and what this entails and how this will affect my relationship with my mother etc yeah 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 i really think um it's in a lot of families like to keep their their mother in her environment oh. um um mine did stay there for as long as she could and then we mm-hmm. had to relocate her but so the challenge is finding the right person, finding the right fit. Yes. Are you able to, in those difficult situations, gently tell somebody when the fit's not good? Because that is a possibility. Yes. Um, as Are you asking as far as if the caregiver we have chosen is not the the best pick or if they're not a good fit for our company well those those are two really good situations (laughs) (laughs) i can answer both (laughs) both. (laughs) okay so sometimes we find and we leave it up to both the caregiver and the client because Uh generally if the caregiver doesn't feel like it's the right fit chances are nine times out of 10, the client feels the same way right? and vice versa, you know. Um, But every once in a while, you know, we do come across situations that, you know, maybe it's not a safe work environment Mm -hmm. for our caregiver or, um, you know, maybe they're just, you know, I... (laughs) And this happens so rarely, but sometimes you have those families who might be a little verbally harsh or um, maybe they've never had someone in their home or worked with people. And so Mm -hmm. it it comes across to our caregivers as being um, rude or disrespectful. And a lot of our our caregivers are so strong. They've been through it a million times. But if, if we currently just don't yeah. have the staff for it, I will not be sending a caregiver to a job where they don't feel successful. Well, that brings up a, another thought I had. Is it normal that your caregivers would go to mother's house, but mother's house is also the children's house? Yes, <laughs> that oh, happens that quite. Time. Yes, that happens quite often. We have a 
quite a few families right now, which that is the case. Um, maybe they work from home or uh -huh. they, you know, they want 12 hours a day, but then they're there overnight uh, just so they can, maybe they have kids. Maybe the kids mm -hmm. also live in the home. So right. there's, there's grandma and then there's um, you know, their daughter and son-in-law, and then they also have kids in the home, which I think is fabulous for, for grandma, you know, yeah, to right. have that youth in the house. It just, right. it just s makes them sparkle. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of caregivers might feel like, oh, I feel like someone's watching me all the time. And so it makes mm -hmm. me a little nervous. You know how it is. Like when you're yeah, typing yeah. at a computer and someone's looking over your shoulder, you start to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, that does happen, but we are just so incredibly blessed and lucky to have to have these and i'm sorry i just always call them these angels that just work and just meld into the family and i recently had um one of our clients um daughters the client is on hospice and the caregiver's name is susan and she said, well, after my daddy passes, I'm wondering how we can keep Susan on at our house because she's become such an integral part, part of our family, you know, and yeah. it, it's, it's amazing. I, um, I just yeah. feel incredibly touched every single day in this job. What a nice compliment for your staff. It, it that really, really is. is getting to a staff that's uh, well liked and that's sometimes difficult to find. It is, and you know, I especially during this what we're calling employment uh, mm -hmm. epidemic right now. Yes. Um, it's hard to turn caregivers away, even those that have experience. Mm -hmm. But if you're not kind, I'm not going to hire you because. Yeah. I think of my dad and my family and would I send that person over to my dad's house? If not, I, I can't hire you. Yeah. You can you can teach and train all of these skill sets, but you can't, you know, train a personality or kindness into someone if it's not there. That's true. That's true. Now, what are the requirements for somebody that wanted to come into the a position like that there's no education requirement is there none is there? that we can't provide in-house okay oh okay so you know okay. if we have a candidate come up and they are uh dependable and have good references and they're kind mm -hmm. i'll teach them everything they want to know and i'll spend days doing it so what kind of things do you make sure they they can do Absolutely. So um, if you were to see our training room, it kind of it just looks like the inside of a house, you know, we have a bed and a wheelchair and a walker and a bathtub and you know, all of these things. So there is the skills aspect as far as tips and tricks, as well as proper body mechanics, because mm -hmm. many of our clients need help out of bed in the morning. And so we need to be able to maybe pivot them to a wheelchair or just help them stand up correctly at their walker so they don't fall. Mm -hmm. And so there's a pretty extensive, what we call a university skills training <laughs> that we mm -hmm. do. Yeah. And, um, you know, they need to be able to, a lot of it is learning to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Right. I, I mean, I had never given anyone a bed bath or a shower yeah. whenever I started this job. And that's one of the first things that I knew I had to tackle because it, right. I, it was looming over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of times you you can watch YouTube videos, you can have training, but nothing is like Actually, nothing is right. like um hands-on experience with a real person, you know, right. and not our um, mannequin named Betsy that lives in our training room. You know, it's just not the same. Um, right. 
So it, it does definitely take experience. So whenever we introduce a caregiver to a new client's home, we go in and do a warm introduction where we introduce them to the family because we've already met them. We've done a walkthrough of the house. We know where things are. We know the routine. And then we don't leave that first shift until the caregiver is completely comfortable. We've stayed a full eight hours <laughs> before Oh, just yeah. to make sure because we never want a caregiver in the field to feel uncomfortable because Mm -hmm. it's very obvious to the client Right. if they're uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. So how do you, now you're, uh, you're very young looking. So I know this has to play havoc with you sometimes. <laughs> People Yes. are going, you're going to help my mother. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get in the door, I can get them. Yes, yes, I can tell by your conversation, you've got the answers, <laughs> but it would be a challenge sometimes with some I, people. I honestly feel like it's more of a challenge for me um, Mm -hmm. because I start thinking about my age because I am a, I am 29 and... <laughs> And I'm like, how am I in this position right now? But, <laughs> um, you know, it, I think they can feel how warm and how passionate and um, dedicated I am to it, Yes, that it's, yeah. it's not going to be one of these big corporations that is dealing with, um, dealing with any issues that may come up. It's, it's someone who really cares and that will drop everything to, Mm -hmm. to be there and make the situation right. But you have been an owner of this company for how many years? Um, a little over two. Two. Yes. So you've got, lot. I mean, you've got history, lots of history to go through and then Of course, your recommendation. So, anyway. <laughs> oh, so there's another thing about the aging that almost everybody deals with, and this is the onset of Alzheimer's or memory loss. And so that is hard for a family. Um, my mother went through it. Everybody I know that their parents have gone through it. So, How does that, how do you work with a family during that period? There has to be a little bit of family training as well, because Mm-hmm. memory care is, I think all of us um, in the office have our own personal bread and butter, if you will. And memory care is definitely mine, um, probably because I was exposed to it at such a young age. Mm, yeah. And, um, you know, it's... <sighs> If you've met one person with dementia, you've only met one person with dementia. There, it, it, there are so many different kinds of um, specific diseases that fall under the dementia umbrella. Yeah. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it really goes back to agreement, um, agreeing with with the person that has dementia is, you know, especially later on in, in the progress of the disease, you, of course, and I, you know, I blame no one for this because it happens a lot. You know, mom says, I want to go home. And then the daughter says, you are home. Don't you see this is your furniture, you know, Yes, <laughs> yes, and right. really trying to bring them back and why, That's instinct. That's Mm instinct -hmm. to Yeah. to miss your mom because she's there, but at the same time, a, a piece of her is missing. Right. Um, so we have done um, like virtual dementia tours where we kind of put them and our caregivers in the position that someone with dementia might have, which this consists of um, 
so we, we you know we put insoles in their feet in their um shoes to replicate um neuropathy we have mm. gloves that make dexterity um way more difficult we mm. have a specific um pair of goggles that replicate um macular degeneration and um then we also have this um simulation of audio that is a great simulation of as to what they what they hear and uh just audio uh hallucinations and then like, and, right yeah like but you actually give them the understanding yes. of where their parents are right That's and awesome. you know we set up a room and we have you know a table that needs to be set a clock that needs to be turned back yeah. cl uh, clothes hung up that they need to button up and zip up and you you soon realize you didn't hear all of the instructions because of these audio hallucinations. Yeah. And um, so many people come out, you know, in tears and with a completely, you know, just like, I didn't know my dad was going through this. I have a better understanding now. Yeah. And I say it over and over and I'll say it again. All they want is someone on their side you can't tell them that what they're seeing and what they're hearing isn't real. Mm -hmm. So you have to agree. So I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm like running rationalize. We rationalize things. We try to sell our, our identity to somebody, change their mind, confirm their, our mind actually. Right. So I think that's kind of what I'm calling that in my mind is what is a, a child does they try to say when the parent says this is not my where is my furniture you know <laughs> this is your furniture isn't that a way of kind of trying to rationalize with them absolutely they, they've lost that right yes unfortunately when it gets to that point the best thing to do is uh -huh. to get mom in the car drive around maybe get some ice cream drive around some more and say you know talk about getting home the whole time like oh can't wait to get home you know you pull back up in the same driveway and you say oh thank god we're home and <laughs> and then the mindset switches and yeah. you know it is always something we have this fabulous client that is a favorite amongst caregivers and you know some days it's the day before christmas and we're making a list the next day you know she had, she had grown up on a farm the next day we're out on the prairie and you know the next day we're packing for a really big trip to ireland and you know we just play along and it's <laughs> It's fun, you know, yeah. you, get, you yourself get to kind of exit your reality. And there's this total misconception that because someone has this disease that they can't lead a joyful life. And that, I believe, is such a disservice to our seniors and not, yeah. and not just seniors, but these days, younger adults are getting this. And mm. um those, yeah. you know, living well isn't often associated with dementia. And I feel like that's a shame. Yeah. So are you saying that dementia is coming earlier in our, than it used to? I'm not sure that the terminology used in earlier times, um, I'm not sure that the language around it would have, you know, specified it as dementia. Right. Uh, there were there were lots of um, lots of talk about becoming senile or yeah. kind of you know um, you know losing your marbles or yeah, falling right. off the rocker or something like that. <laughs> you know so i think now it is it's in earlier ages it's being identified more often right i do think that um i i have found out about dr amon's oh the yes Amons clinic mm -hmm. and he is a brain specialist and his work has just been enlightening to me because I do have Alzheimer's in my family. And so 
I want to be very much aware of those things that I can do to prevent it. You know, I want to know where I am. I want to know what I can do because Mm -hmm. I do think there are things and he says it, there are things you can do so that you don't have to take it as, as a norm. It's Mm -hmm. what happens. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people still take it as a norm. I agree. I 100% agree. Um, Education is just so important. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, and we have this, you know, this, because a lot of times people are just like, what can you do to fill this time? So you're not just staring at my mom the whole time. And a lot of it is, you know, things like brain games um, and conversation cards that are appropriate for those with dementia to Mm -hmm. keep the, um, just to keep the conversation going so you can get a better idea of, of what hallucinations you might have, but, for preventative care, there, I mean, there are a million things you can do. Um, walking. walking. Walking is a great, is a great thing that's, that's totally overlooked. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I mean, um, you know, just playing cards and mm-hmm. um, keeping your mind active. Re- we, if their vision isn't, isn't uh, good enough to read on their own, we read to them. Mm-hmm. It's a big thing around here for our elders to want to read the obituaries, regardless of if they know them or not. (laughs) So a lot of our shifts, the first thing we do is make them a cup of coffee, get them their medication, and then we read the obits. (laughs) Yes. We used to play dominoes a lot. Yes. Play dominoes. Yes, we actually have these activity bags um, that are available for our caregivers to bring, or maybe we might see a need for them uh, once we meet them. So we just bring one over, but it has, you know, checkers and um, bat, backgammon and dominoes, dice, you yeah. name it, coloring books, <laughs> just so <laughs> you can you can really spend good companionship time together because when you're focused on on what's in front of you you know your mind won't wander and it it just keeps things ticking in there yeah 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 there really is a lot in you know if families are are experiencing the beginning of some memory issues it's really important to research because there's so much out there much more than five years ago than what we thought was uh, doable or call you (laughs) I think you should write a book (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness I'm a little long-winded it might be a few books (laughs) well that's okay (laughs) but wouldn't that be a great thing to have a manual to how to uh, make this transition and just games you can do and how you could prevent uh, you know prevent oh, some of this well that's a new idea I could I could even have word puzzles in the book <laughs> you could <laughs> <laughs> well tell me about some of the what what are the next steps when people start to see signs of aging in a family absolutely um signs of aging you really unfortunately parents are really good they were good about hiding Christmas presents when you were a kid and yeah, they were good yeah. about hiding their memory loss when they're older. Yeah. And because they fear that their freedom is going to be taken from them and their independence is going to be no longer, which luckily for us, we're in the business of, of helping maintain that um that independence which is why i got rid of like many companies and i understand why from a dis- from a business standpoint why you would do this but me- most people won't sign a client on if they need less than four hours got rid of all of my minimums that way i can start small and they don't feel like we're totally intruding on their lives well, that's a good point. Uh, and yeah. then we can slowly build up as the bond grows yep. and more needs are being represented. Right. So yeah. when you start to see it, some of the first things, unfortunately, sometimes some of the first things we see are, you know, kind of a, 
a devastating experience. Maybe mom has a fall over a throw rug that she will not get rid of, you right. know, or, yeah. um, or maybe, you know, they, they, they get lost on a drive or yeah. have a, a car accident that really wasn't like dad to have, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so unfortunately, sometimes those things aren't, they don't know they need us until something like that happens. Right. Um, so I think if, the family is around and you're noticed mom that your mom might be um might not be as sharp as she once was doing those companionship things that we do like brain games see really how on top of that she is and get a gauge for it yeah. and i think regardless of i think regardless of if you're feeling it or not or you know or not Get a get imaging done on your brain. Um, right. It's just a smart thing to do when when you're aging because I mean, aside from dementia, anything could be happening. So um, you know, we we partner with a great um, company here in Longmont that um, does very inexpensive brain scans, and we'll talk to you about you know what you can expect in the future and um yeah we're just we're very lucky to have them yeah yeah um they opened an amon's dr amon's clinic in dallas okay. and so yeah i know you can go there and get brain scans um so that's a whole new thing to be able to just go specifically to have the brain scanned and actually it's it's no more than if you've broken an arm and you go see what the arm looks like inside to fix it. So we have to change that thought about the scan for the brain means I'm going down. It doesn't right. it's it totally means you have an issue. <laughs> exactly. It. Right. And, yeah. you know, it could be completely just preventative care. Yeah. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a a drug yet um, that is, you know, authorized by the FDA um, to reverse or stop the disease at this point. Um, Won't that be good when they find it? <sighs> I oh that'll be great. My goodness, I pray for it every day. <laughs> but um because I just you know it runs very heavily in my family. So I know yeah. I have a pretty good inkling that I'm going to, you know, have a little bit of that myself. So okay, now there's another thing that um this is kind of kind of going on my history with my mom, but mm -hmm. another thing that I think is very difficult for families. And that is to take the car away, um, yes. you know, and I get it. That's independence. And, you know, when that happens to me, I'll probably yell and scream, mm -hmm. but taking the car away is really difficult because you, you connect with your parent. You don't want them to feel like they're old and can't drive. But there is a bigger question here in other people's safety. There's Absolutely. definitely, but Absolutely. also other people's safety. Yes. You know. And that's, you know, it's such a hard thing. And there are many different conversations you can have, but it just seems almost so wrong to take away mom's keys yeah. or dad's keys and yeah. you know here in colorado there is a um a seniors driving test <laughs> so uh -huh. we often recommend just having a conversation saying hey we know where you're going to pass this test yeah. so yeah. let's just have you come up here and then and then you know it'll just put us at ease you right. know it's not for you mom it's really just for out for our um you know our comfort um right you know blaming it because a lot of times it if you're getting your t your keys taken away, it feels like a punishment. But if you turn it around and say, it's for me, 
it's for my, so I can sleep at night and kind of making yourself the bad guy instead of making them feel like they're the bad guy because maybe their driving skills have deteriorated. Um, you know, I, that, that's kind of my go-to, um, is just that seniors driving test. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, one thing I did is I just asked one of mother's doctors to do it for me. That's their that's, job. I think that's awesome. Any chance you can <laughs> to make <laughs> someone else the bad guy yes. is fabulous. Um, right. Yeah, it just so you don't have to strain what might already be a strained relationship with a parent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's a really touchy one. <laughs> yes, it is. And I definitely, I get it. I so get it. Um, so anyway, but it's just one of the transitions that has to be faced. Yeah. As somebody ages. So, but the, I do think one thing I think that you've also emphasized is there is, there is a lot of hope in this aging process. I think they're going to get better now that you know, we have people that are studying the brain, we have people, but still you have to exercise the body. If you go with a person that never exercised, the body's going to get older quicker and yes. you're going to get stiff and you're going to get, so just walking gets you mm -hmm. back into the game. A bit. It sure does. Yeah. It's totally underrated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I started a new program yesterday, going back to the gym because I've not always been an exerciser myself. And um, I want to go walk up a very tall hill on a trip that I'm going on in about a month and a half. And I know to do that, I have to go walk and I have to go back to the gym and I have to use those muscles that will carry me up that hill. And so <laughs> I was at the gym yesterday, which is uh, connected to our medical area here in Tyler. And it was amazing how many people in that gym were 60 and over 50 and over yes. because it is the message is getting through that you have to exercise your body you don't use it it wears out and that's so. i mean that correlates directly into the discussion that we were having because your brain is a muscle and you have to in order to get over those really hard times when you're aging you have you have to have exercised that muscle Right. Yeah. So I got a coach and I'm going to the gym. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. I so, would need a coach as well. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what they, well, that's an industry that is doing a lot of good work. I said to her, I said, uh, why did you do this work? And she said, I enjoy my clients and I enjoy helping people stay healthy. So. It's a good you know, reason. It's a good reason. Why do you do what you're doing? <sighs> there are just so many reasons. Um, maybe, maybe I will write a book after all. Um, I think you should. <laughs> I think it would sell. <laughs> you know, I do it because I did come from this small town where we're away from, you know, a lot of resources. And so everyone did have to take care of each other and mm -hmm. my my mom and dad are in arkansas and i get so many calls from other from other sons and daughters who um really want to trust who's coming over you know whenever they're so far away yeah. and i want to provide comfort to the sons and daughters almost as equally as I want to, you know, provide that amazing service for our clients. Mm -hmm. But that's only half of it because the other half is the amazing caregivers that we have. I, um, my life is so dedicated to making sure that they have what they need to be successful because without them, you know, I can't, we couldn't, I couldn't do it all on my own. And we're being able to reach so many people with such great 
quality, kind caregivers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's very much a threefold situation. <laughs> so would you say you love your work? One hundred. That would be an understatement. I, I just, it brings me to life every morning at six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes. So I'd like to ask a few questions, just a couple, two here. So um, would you share one of the things that you learned on the journey of transition? Okay, if you can remember that time when you were really looking for something that filled your heart. Yes. Uh, what, what was most important? What was one of the most important things that you did that uh, helped you through that? Whenever I was coming from, you know, Whole Foods leadership, I very much felt like I was putting just as much love and effort and kindness into into the job that I have now, but I was, I was um, serving less of a purpose. And I, I hate to say that because everyone needs people in grocery stores and leadership and, and, and that thing and that, those types of things. But um, I was really tired of being a part of someone's run of the mill everyday errand whenever i i felt like my heart is so big wide and open and bleeding for for those who really need the help right. um you know even whenever i was in that business if you know gosh it wasn't my department to do it but i would uh i would definitely you know see a, a senior citizen looking for something or um just maybe confused in the area and i mean i always just dropped what i was doing whether that was a good idea for my job or not and i helped them right <laughs> because it made me yeah. feel like i was serving a greater purpose yeah yeah uh and what do you consider success for yourself Happiness, um, happiness is always been like my caliber for success. And now it's, it's broadened much more than that and making other people feel valued Mm -hmm. because I haven't always felt valued in my, um, and in, in my employment and other places, Mm -hmm. it's just, really making sure that my caregivers feel supported and loved and like they're part of something big because they are. Well, I like when you do, you close this by saying, I am living my dream. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I really am. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we have come to the end of our show. And for those people out there that have heard this wonderful show, we've, we've got you writing a book now. <laughs> we've added one more thing to your day. <laughs> Piece of cake. But uh, I think it would be awesome. You've given us so many good ideas. I mean, the importance of creating and staying with that person. And, and really, uh, it's almost like, I don't, it's almost like, working with a child, but taking them on it, as we many parents have learned, it's better just to change the, the environment to get them to do what you want them to do. It's almost a game. So um, it's about loving them in so many different ways, right? It is. So anyway, thank you. You've oh. been a wonderful guest. I love all the wisdom that you share with us. And is there a way that if my there's some listener out there that really would like to just call you up and give you a chat about certain things. Is there a way for them to do that? Absolutely. I would love to, to give out my number. Uh-huh. Um, and that, and really you don't have to live in Colorado. I'm willing to talk to anyone about any issues or questions that they might have regarding a family member. And that number is 720 
That would be awesome because there's so many questions to ask at this time oh, yeah. during their life. So anyway, uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Now, listener, and by the way, I think you are an angel too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So listeners out there, you know, I always like to sum up the calls and the shows with sort of a encouragement for you to do. There are so many people that are going through this transition. It's so easy to reach out and see families that are in, in chaos or frustration and they don't know the next thing. The most important thing you could do today is maybe direct them to the show, this podcast or share her number with them. Just do something to reach out and help your friends around you that are facing these issues and they have a question. What do we do now? What do we do next? What is important? How do I do this? Those are all important questions. And it's just because we've not been here before that we're experiencing this new and we want to do it right. And so it's when you want to do it right and you want to be fair, that's when you reach out for knowledgeable people like Leighton. Um, so she can help you, Leighton Boyce. And the number again, Leighton, is? 720-204-5788. Thank you. So till next week, I uh, look forward to hearing from you that you'll be back. We'll have another great show for you. And I hope this week you make it the best week you can by helping others. Thank you for being here. Always love to know you're here. Bye. Joyce Buford returns next week at the same time for another edition of Second Wind. Through the Joyce Buford Empowerment System, women are receiving the support they need through their transitions and are able to reclaim their true purpose with confidence. They receive the tools they need to map out new lives. You can find out more about her coaching services at JoyceBufordEmpowers.com. Thank you.